Hello everybody, it's GB. Welcome. I can't believe I've never made this video before, but it is the perfect timing. Hopefully this video is being posted right before American Thanksgiving. So if you're seeing family or Friendsgiving or this is usually when a lot of people like will have off work or vacations or maybe people have visitors coming to their house. Um, and I'm seeing a bunch of my cousins this year, which is really great. I'm very excited. I haven't had a big Thanksgiving in a while, and we always play games. My family is very game-oriented, um, and I have accumulated many games over the years. So I wanted to share those games with you, just in case there are any that you haven't heard of before and you want to try with your friends and family, or maybe you just like to hear me ramble. I will say, this definitely could be a much more organized, snappy, thought-together video, but it's, it's not. It's 1 a.m on Ben's birthday, and I was like, mm, I'm gonna film this video, <laughs> but it's gonna be more of like a ramble slash like a friend telling you games that they like to play, rather than a very polished professional YouTube video explaining these games. So I apologize in advance. Um, I will try to timestamp them at least. That's the least I can do. So, I have, and I wish I could, like, film these for you, but by the time I get to, like, my cousin's house, well, this video will already have to be up, so it doesn't matter. I don't have anyone to film these games with at the moment, but I'm going to try to explain them to you. Okay. So, I am going to split them up um, between, like, literal games, like games you have to purchase, um, games you can play with uh, for free, like just with your body, and then drinking games. So obviously you can just play drinking games without actually putting alcohol in the cups and drinking them. Um, some of them would be like a little suspicious, like it might not be fun outside of, I don't know. Anyway, drink responsibly, please, um, you know, legal age limit in your country, that, that sort of thing. Uh, when you do play drinking games, be responsible and safe. Uh, a lot of times when you play drinking games, you drink a lot more and faster than you would have, so I would definitely recommend playing this with the lowest alcohol, like, percentage content you can find, like, light beer, 4% or less. Less is good less is good. I feel like some light beers are like three to three and a half percent or something, but that's what you're aiming for. Do not play any of these with wine or hard alcohol. Do not. <laughs> Don't. Don't. Well, light beer tastes bad, so I'm gonna do it with an IPA. You stupid. You stupid. Um, okay. But I'll put the drinking games at the end. You can skip around if you want, in the timestamps. Alright, the first one is my family's absolute favorite. It's our staple, it's our hallmark, it is fish bowl charades. So, this game of charades is superior to the typical charades because it is faster and involves way less fighting between teams. So we used to play classic charades all the time. Um, and that was like all our hallmark where like we were insane at like regular charades. Um, and then regular charades, you, your team makes the papers for the other team. And so you try to make them really, really hard, uh, really hard to guess, really like crazy titles. And so we would only be able to do books, movies, and TV shows. And our family got so 
good at it that it was no longer fun. We would fight all the time. We had to make a bunch of rules to make it even possible at all. People were putting in like names of textbooks, you know, like it, it was too much. And we all developed like, we basically like developed our own sign language. So it was no longer acting out the book, the movie, or the TV show. No, 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 no. You would be acting out like you would go book, movie, or TV show. You would say how many words it is. The first word, two syllables, sounds like ear, ear, beer, seer. And you'd be like, yes, that one, second syllable, this. So you're basically just ended up like acting out syllables instead. And it kind of like, it was too much. So then my sweet cousin, a little shout out, you know who you are came to us and said, hey, I play this fishbowl charades. And I was like, okay. So with fishbowl charades, the bowl is communal. This is super important because the things that you're writing that go into the charades bowl are for everyone. So it could, you could pick up your own thing. You don't want to make it so obscure that only you would be able to guess it. Your team might pick it up or the other team might pick it up. The other rule is that it can be anything at all. If it's something obscure, we usually put in parentheses. So like if I'm playing with people who like some people don't watch anime, but I wanted to put like Levi Ackerman as one of my papers, I would write Levi Ackerman. And then in parentheses, I would say, Attack on Titan character if I felt really nice. Or I would just say like anime character in parentheses and they're allowed to say that. So if someone picked that up, they have no idea who Levi Ackerman is, they can at least say, well, he's an anime character to get them going. And now I say say because there's different rounds to this. So what you want to do is split up your, split into two teams. Now everyone's going to get the same number of papers. The more papers you give, the longer the game will be. We usually do 10, and it's pretty great. Um, I don't think charades have ever, has ever gone like too long, honestly. So you're going to get 10 little pieces of paper, and you can write anything. Books, movies, TV shows, characters, songs, memes, phrases, emotions, inside jokes, anything, video games, you know, like literally anything you can write down. Like if I wanted to write something stupid, like, um, like <laughs> surprising your grandma for her 80th birthday. Like you could put that down and like all of a sudden like that kind of becomes fun to act out. So this one is going to have three rounds. Everyone puts their papers into the bowl same bowl, everyone. Now the first player is going to go from team one. First player goes and the first round of the bowl, you pick out a piece of paper and you have one minute. Somebody starts a timer on the other team and they have one minute. You pick out a piece of paper from the bowl and you need to get your team to say what's on the piece of paper without saying any of the words. Like if it was Spongebob Squarepants, you obviously can't say it's about a sponge because we're in sponge. Spongebob, it's cheating. But you can say anything you want except for what's on the paper. So if I got Spongebob Squarepants, I could say it's a Nickelodeon show underwater, his best friend's Patrick Star, and they would obviously get Spongebob Squarepants. Great. They got it like put that paper aside and immediately pick up another one as fast as you can so you can say anything you want to get them to guess these and in 60 seconds you want to try to get as many pieces of paper as possible so you're like going you're going you're going and your team is guessing obviously so after you go then team two will send somebody up and they do the same thing from the same bowl but those papers that you just did spongebob and all those they stay out and they count towards your points so those are out of the bowl. Once they pick it up, it's out of the bowl. But what you want to do is remember 
try to remember and pay attention to both rounds, which is another reason why the game is so good, because you're engaged the whole time. Remember what's in this bowl. What are the things that people are getting you to guess? Because you want to remember these. Once everyone has gone so much that the bowl is empty, you tally up your points, you tally up your points, you put all those papers back in, all the papers back in the bowl, and you want to go again. So this is now round two. The same entries are in the bowl as when you started, but now, now you can only say one word to get your team to guess. So we've gone through all these words, blah, 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 blah. It's my turn. It's round two. I pick up SpongeBob SquarePants. I have to think about what word will get my team to guess SpongeBob SquarePants, which they should kind of remember from the first round. Obviously, it's hard to remember them all perfectly, which is why the game is fun. So I could say something like Nickelodeon. Like, that would be a good word. I could say pineapple, pineapple into the sea. I could say Patrick or Squidward would be a really good one because Squidward is like, like Patrick could be a lot of different Patricks. Squidward, there's only one Squidward. So I'd say, think about it, Squidward. That's all I can say. Can't, I can repeat it, but I can't say anything else. And they're like, oh my god, like what could that be? Oh, SpongeBob SquarePants. And you pick up the next one as fast as you can, 60 seconds, and then it's the next person's next teams. Great. So now um, everyone keeps going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The bowl is emptied again. You tally up your points, tally up your points. It all goes back in the bowl for the third round, which is the charades round, the acting out round. So now you have two rounds of kind of remembering and thinking about what prompts are in the bowl, and now you get to act them out. So because people are so familiar with the things that went into the bowl, there's so much more like genuine, like hilarious acting during this round versus like traditional charades where you're like trying to get people to guess like the words themselves. So, um, if I pick up SpongeBob SquarePants in the third round, I'm much more likely to like act out SpongeBob SquarePants or something. Like that's how Tom Kenny laughs. Um, or it could be Squidward or something, you know, like Mr. Krabs. <laughs> I don't know. You get it. So the third round is all acting. Again, you go as fast as you can for 60 seconds and it's the next person's turn. After the end of the third round, <laughs> You can play the bonus round. We never play the bonus round. It's acting. It's acting, but you have to have a blanket over you. We've never actually done that one. Um, yeah. But then you tally up all your points from your three rounds, and whoever has those points wins. So it's really great. Uh, love fishbowl charades. Highly recommend. The next game I have for you is Wavelength. So, Wavelength is a game that I believe you can actually purchase, but it's possible to play it on your own if you can think of your own categories. So, what you want to do for Wavelength is you don't necessarily need teams, you can play with just a couple people. Um, and what you need to do is pick a category or two opposing things. So, let's do something really easy dry to wet. So they're opposites and we're going to make a like a scale here. So let's say dry is 1 and wet is 21. And so 11 would be perfectly in the middle of dry and wet and etc. 2 would be extremely extremely dry but not totally completely dry. 20 would be really 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 wet but not like totally 100% wet. And you go onto your phone, random number generator from 1 to 21, say it's my turn. Okay, let's say I get 21. So what I want to do is say something that will get the crowd 
to guess number 21. So for me, 21 is wet. The wettest wet wet thing I could think of. So I would say water. Water. You can't get more. In my brain, I don't think you can get more wet than water. So everyone gets to kind of debate with each other. They're like, oh, water. That's got to be 21. That's like the wettest wet you can you can do. And then someone's like, yeah, but water technically isn't wet. So I don't think it's 21. And they're like, shut up. Water's wet. And, like, and then it starts a whole argument, you know, and that's the fun of it. <laughs> so then anyway, everyone gets to lock in their answers. You know, that guy is like, I think it's like 15. And then everyone else is like, it's 21, obviously. And then, so then I get to reveal it was 21. Good job. You're an idiot. And it's hilarious. So the categories can be really, really um, bizarre or very, very simple. So like slow to fast, young to old, ugly to attractive. Um, and you can say absolutely anything to try and get them to guess your number. So when it gets to be something like... So if it was like ugly to attractive, which is very subjective, which makes it funny. And maybe I pulled like a 13. So we're like more than a halfway to attractive, but like it's not like totally, totally attractive. So I need to try to think of something that will get someone to guess on a scale of 0 to 21 from ugly to attractive. And so maybe I would say something like, um, something like Ganondorf <laughs> from Zelda. <laughs> I guess it depends which Ganondorf. I don't know why he came to mind, but it's my friends and family know that while Ganondorf may not be conventionally attractive, oh, GP is weird and thinks that he's kind of attractive. So I pick somebody intentionally not maybe conventionally attractive to bring down the score, but someone I think is attractive to bring up his score to a solid 13. And so you have to try to see if, you know, people know you well enough and you can guess and yeah. That is wavelength. Um, you can Google, you should be able to Google like wavelength categories um, and you can come up with some really really funny ones so that's a great game the next game i have not played in a very long time again because my friends and family got too good at it it is the animal game or i've heard a lot of people call it thumper so i do have a ton of cousins and we used to get uh like to do family reunions pretty frequently um we were all school age so you know you'd have summer break and things like that and when we would play thumper everyone picked an animal and they you stuck with it for the rest of your life so i still remember all my cousins animals and mine was the unicorn so there are different animals you can pick, um, bear, lion, gorilla, uh, zebra with the stripes, giraffe with the neck, um, fish, that's rivers, fish, etc. And, oh, bird. That was James's. I don't know if he was a bird. I think he was something more specific than a bird, but, um, anyway, it's hilarious. And once you pick your animal, you have to learn the beat, the pattern. And the pattern goes like this. And you do it on your thighs, like on your legs. So once everyone gets the pattern, you're going to have someone start. So say if I started, we're going to go dun, 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 dun. So on the first beat, I do my, on the first clap, I would do my animal sign. And then I go back down to slap, dun, dun. And instead of the second clap, I'm going to do someone else's animal sign. So say River is playing and she's the fish. And I'm beginning. 
uh, we're gonna start the beat. Then I go unicorn, which is mine, fish, which is hers. So you gotta keep it going instantly. I do fish. Boom, boom. She has to immediately pick it up. Boom, boom. And then send it somewhere else. Say, giraffe was playing. So, she would pick it up with hers. She would answer my call. And then, boom, boom, giraffe. And then giraffe would have to pick it up. Giraffe. Unicorn. And I pick it up. Unicorn. Giraffe. I'm sending it back. You only have to do it when someone calls your animal. And the hard part is keeping the beat the whole time. Um, it can get really, really fast. You can get faster and faster and faster and faster. And you're slapping and your legs are red and it's a great time. And eventually someone will mess up. If someone messes up, they, everyone hollers and boos and they are eliminated from the game. So it is an elimination game. And eventually there's only two people standing and you're going back and forth, back and forth with your animals. And eventually someone will mess up again. Our family played this a little too much. We got a little too good at it. And these games will go on forever and everyone's legs hurt. So we don't really play that much anymore. But it is hysterical if you've never played it. Um, great for younger kids. Great for um, adults who are uncoordinated. Just hysterical time. And that is the animal game. Another really good game to play with a group of people is... Hmm, I'm not really sure what this one is called. I guess we'll just call it 21. What you want to do is have everyone stand in a circle so you can see each other. You should be able to make eye contact with everyone in the room. You want to feel like connected. So the only rules of this game is that you have to count collectively to 21 in order and no one can interrupt. There should also be a rule. My light just died over there, but it's okay. There should also be a rule where Everyone has to participate, like everyone has to say at least one number, um, but usually there's no problem with that. Like obviously you could just like cheat, but there's no communicating other than you're standing in a circle and someone has to start one. And then someone else in the circle has to say two but you don't know who it is or when they're going to do it. And if two people or multiple people say two at the same time, you have to start over completely from one. So it is totally like a, you're trying to like feel everyone's vibe. You're trying to guess when people are going to say something, the timing, it's been too long, all this stuff. And it is so difficult and so funny so hard to get to 21 without people interrupting each other. Um, but I can tell you it is the most satisfying, like team building feeling when you do get it. Uh, obviously the more people that are playing, the harder it is because there's more chances of people interrupting, uh, but it is so hysterical, very easy game to play. You could just play it around the table if you want to great time. The next game is um, pretty common, I think. I think most people have heard of this game. I feel like it was in a TV show. I can't remember which one, but it's called Up Chicken. Up Chicken. So what you want to do for Up Chicken is, again, you're going to split into two teams. One team will be guessing and the other team will be chickening. I don't know. So you need a coin. A uh, big coin is better, so like a quarter is best, and you're going to need to play this on a hard surface, so a table. So the one team sits on one side, the other team sits on the other. When your team has the coin, say there's like four of us on my team, take the coin, we're going to all put our hands underneath the table, and we're going to start 
moving our arms and passing that coin to each other so the other team can't see where it is. So you're faking out, you're faking out, maybe I pass the coin this way, pass the coin that way, pass the coin this way. After uh, a brief period of time, the other team can say up chicken whenever they'd like. When the other team says up chicken, my team has to stop passing it and immediately boom, boom, hit your elbows onto the table, closed fist towards you. Okay, up chicken, and one of these fists is holding the coin, and when the other team is ready, they say, down chicken, and when you hear down chicken, everyone on the team, hopefully at the same time, will go and hit their palms onto the table. Now, whoever has the coin in their hand, when they hit their palm onto the table, it's going to make a little metal ding, like clang, when the, when the coin hits the table. And it's the other team's job to figure out which hand has that coin, which hand made that sound. So up chicken, down chicken. And then everyone on my team is going to hold their hands there. Even though I don't have any coins in my hand, I know it. I have to bluff. And what the other team does is picks the hand that they think doesn't have the coin. So they're like, okay, it's definitely not over by GB. I heard that clang over there, and GB sitting over here. And they would touch my hand. And as they touch my hand, I lift it up, no coin. They touch my other hand, I lift it up, no coin. And they want to get all no coins until the very last one when they would reveal the coin and they win. Um, now, say I did have that coin. And they touch my hand, and I lift it up. There's a coin under there. They lose. You're supposed to get all the non-coin hands. And that's it. And you hand it to the next team, and they do it. Um, this can be a drinking game with, like, a drinking penalty if they, if they lose, or a drinking penalty for my team if they successfully guess it, if you want to play it that way. But that's up chicken. The next game is another one that you can buy, uh, but you can also just play it with uh, if you just have paper and pencil or even your phones. So it's categories. If you've never played categories, it is such a good game. Um, what you want to do is make up 10 categories of pretty broad things. So great categories are uh, girls' names and boys' names, or just names in general, last names, um, sports, movies, TV shows, characters, animated characters, uh, weather, like types of weather, types of clothing, um, beauty products, brands, cars, majors, colleges, um, drinks, cocktails, that kind of thing any category you can think of. And if you're playing this when you're making up the categories and you're playing with like family or a group of friends, you know, you can, you can put in like inside joke categories or things only you guys would know. Like all my cousins really love Avatar The Last Airbender. So like we could do an Avatar category. We could do like cousins, I don't know, or like a like traits of GB, like just to be silly and stuff like that. Um, you can get some funny categories going. You want to pick 10 of them and everyone should write these categories down in the same order. So let's play a game of three categories. So our first category is going to be names. The second category is ASMR triggers. And the third category is websites. Okay, so we all agreed on these categories, and then somebody's going to need to randomly generate on their phone, or anyone can pick just a letter. So let's say the letter was M. M is a pretty good one. So once you have the letter, Instantly, you need to start a three-minute timer. You can adjust the timer if you need more or less time. I've always found three minutes works really well. Three-minute timer, and everybody takes their papers and covers their work, and you want to think of one thing.
thing in each of these categories that starts with M that no one else in the room is going to write. So you need something as obscure as possible. So for names, now, an instant name that pops into my head is Michael, because it's such a common M name. But I'm like, you know what? I think somebody else mm, will probably put Michael. So what's the, the most obscure M name I can think of? Minerva. That is so obscure. No one will put Minerva. So I'll write Minerva down for names. I move on to the next category. ASMR triggers. Okay, what ASMR triggers start with M, 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 M. I'm thinking in my head, you know, uh, mic scratching. Mic scratching is such a good one. Super common. So maybe someone's going to put that down, but I'm pressed for time. So let me just put down mic scratching. And then the third one, websites, websites. Ooh, let's see. Uh, Meopets. No, that was Neopets. Okay. Um, and then you have to try to think of a website that starts with M. Um, let's think. I can't think of a website that starts with M off the top of my head. I'm really rusty. Okay, Madewell. That's, that's a brand, but you know, they have a website. I shop online on Madewell. And you can see, like, if you do more specific categories, it'll be much a much more competitive game. Uh, so, okay, madewell.com. That's the website I'm going to do. So, three minutes is up. Everyone, pencils down. So now what we're going to do is someone starts, and you're going to go around the room, and one at a time, you're going to read what you have. All right, so number one, names. Minerva. And the person next to me, Molly. The person across from me, Max. The person over there, Melissa. Um, great. We all had different M names, so we all get one point. Well done. Okay, category number two, ASMR triggers. I said mic scratching. Person next to me, I also said mic scratching. Dang it, I knew it was super common. So, person next to me also said mic scratching. I said mic scratching. We cross it out. No point. Number three, websites made well. And nobody else said made well. I get a point. So I got two out of three points. If you can't think of anything in that time, obviously you also get zero points. And you play a couple of rounds of that, and that's the game. The only other tiny little rule is uh, adjectives do not count. So if I said, you know, if it was for ASMR triggers for the letter V, if I said very good tapping, the word is tapping. That would be for T. You can't just like put an adjective in the front of it. Very good tapping. Oh, it's a V. No, 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 no. You can argue those. And then the other one would be if you have a proper noun and it's double. So say one of the categories was actors and the letter was A. If you say Amy Adams and nobody else says Amy Adams, you get two points because you had Amy Adams, A, A. Because first and last, usually for things like celebrities, um, his, like history, people of history, whatever, those categories, you can do first or last name. You can decide your house rules if you'd like, but yeah, you can do first or last usually. That's really the only other rules I could think of. Categories. We love categories. All right, let's start getting into games that you can purchase. Now, the first two, the first one, because this one's a drinking game. The first one that's not a drinking game, a game that I would highly suggest is the game Heads Up. I will say, I've had this on my phone for so long, and it really comes in handy. It might make a noise when I open it. If my phone dies, I'll be so sad. It's called Heads Up. It's an app. I think it's by Ellen DeGeneres. But it's really fun to play in line if you're ever waiting. If you're ever waiting in line for something. So there's different categories on here. One that I really like is the Hey Mr. DJ one. I think this is the best category of all. And you're going to play 
place it on your forehead. Okay, it'll start. I can't see, but the... Oh, okay. So it's One Last Time by Ariana Grande. So everyone's this, the people around me. The only thing you can't do is say one last time. So they would start like humming. Da, da, da. I need to be the one who takes you home. And I'm like, oh my God, one last time. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get it right and I pass. So maybe they're like, oh, we don't know the song. We don't know the song. Pass, pass. You pass upwards and you keep going. You try to see how many you can get. It is hilarious. It is a really great game. Um, I'm not sure if the app is free. I know there are in-app purchases, but I did download this years and years and years ago, and I have to say, I do still whip it out sometimes, and it is a good time. All right. Okay. The other one on my phone is a drinking game, so I will film that now but I will edit it into the drinking game portion. Okay, so I know there are a million board games out there um, that are obviously very fun to play with groups of people, but one of them really does deserve uh, a call out. If you have not played Code Names, you, you gotta play Code Names. This is such a fun game. Um, I won't explain it too much because it's like a real game and you can go read the rule book and everything. But essentially what you do is there's going to be 25 words out on the table, split into two teams, and each team has a captain. So if I was the captain and then my opponent's captain, we get to look at the card, secret card that corresponds to the 25 words and these words are things like bolt car bell press cliff etc put them all on the table so everyone can read them and then we get a card that tells us which which words are blue which words are red, which words are neutral, and which is the instant death word. So, so you would like look at the words on the table and I'd be like, okay, the fourth one over is red, I'm red, so that's my word. So you get about eight or so words and your opponent gets one, one less or one more. And over has more words starts and what I want to do is get my team to guess all the red words before their team guesses all the blue words. And you go one at a time. It's not fast paced in the slightest. It's quite slow game. And you want, so to, in order to do that, you want to group up the words so they can guess more than one at a time. But you don't want them to guess the other people's words. Okay, so... Say three words on the board are London, Shakespeare, and Boom. So my red words are Boom and Shakespeare. My opponent's word is London. That's one of their words. So I want to get my team to guess Boom and Shakespeare without guessing London, which could be kind of hard. So what can tie Shakespeare and Boom together? Maybe something like tragedy. So Boom might imply like an explosion, which could be a tragedy. So you want to like everything really, like you have to fudge it a lot. You're rarely going to find the perfect word. So I say, and then Shakespeare writes a lot of tragedies, like tragic plays. Like, I feel like that word is tied to Shakespeare pretty easily. So there's 25 words on the board, um, but I'm just looking at these right now. And I tell my team, tragedy for two, because there's two words on this board that to me, tragedy applies to both of them, and I want them to guess those words. 
And so days of tragedy, tragedy, oh, Shakespeare, definitely, like, that's, that's a good word for Shakespeare. They press Shakespeare, I put the red card on top of it, which means, yes, that was one of our words. And then they're like, okay, tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. And they want to, like, look at all these words, and someone's like, oh, boom, maybe, tra uh, like, tragedy, like a boom, it'd be an explosion. No, 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 I don't think so, that's not a good one. Let's guess something else. Blah, 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 blah. Et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's as far as I'm going to go into explaining the game, because there are a couple more rules, obviously. Um... But you can read the rule book. At any rate, it is quite fun. It is more slow paced, I will say. But it's nice if you're just like having a, like just getting started or having a chill evening. The last non drinking game that my family pretty consistently plays is Jackbox. If you haven't heard of Jackbox, I would actually really recommend checking it out. Um, not, I'm not sponsored by any, any game in this video at all. Um, there are different party packs, and each pack has mini games in it. Uh, some of my favorite mini games, I would say we play Party Pack 7 the most. Um, party Pack 3, I believe, has the murder trivia party one. And there's so many party games, because um, each one has like at least four or five. And they just came out with Party Pack 8. So there's a ton of games mixed into them. Uh, some of them are better than others. We love Quiplash. I really like Blather Rounds. Um, the Murder Trivia Party is really good. Uh, Fibbage All About You is really fun with people you know or like that you know pretty well. Um, the Alien one is really good for people who like games like Among Us. And then there's like other stuff too. There's drawing games, which I find pretty hard. It's like hard to draw on your phone. Um, and some of them are obviously better than others, but that just comes down to who you're playing with and what you guys like. But I do recommend Jackbox. Those are great games. We have reached the drinking game portion of this video, which is good because I have been filming for almost an hour and oopsie doopsie. Okay. Again, drink responsibly. However, since like college or so, drinking games have been a fairly big part of my friends and family. Uh, we're all quite competitive. We like doing things and playing games. And usually when we're all together, we're celebrating something. It's festive, so there's alcohol. We also have done a lot of like beer Olympics, which is like you take a bunch of these games and you make a structure and there's teams and there's points and there's winners and all that. Um, and we've just played a lot of different games and I've kind of found the best ones or my favorite ones. So if your family and friends are also into drinking games or maybe you want to try some, here are my favorite. Now we do play a lot of classic beer pong. I'm not really going to explain that one. Um, I'm not going to explain beer pong. Everyone knows beer pong. Or at least you can Google it quite simply so I won't waste everyone's time by explaining beer pong, but I will say that is very commonly played in our household. But let's move on. The next one is a game called Beer Ball. This has become one of my absolute favorites. It is such a fun game. Um, so what you want to do for beer ball, two teams of two people. So it's me and a partner versus you and a partner. And you're going to stand across a fold out table, beer pong table that has a kind of size table. Each person will have one unopened can of light beer and you're going to have to flip it upside down. It's, it's unopened, so you're good upside down onto the table in each corner. One, two, three, four. The beer in front of me is mine, etc, etc. Um, so then you will also need ping pong ball. You only need one ping pong ball for this game, 
and the point of the game is to throw the ping pong ball at your opponent's cans and if I do hit either of the opponent's cans and it bing hits the can, it will bounce off. Now, once the ball hits the can, my partner can flip over their beer, crack it open, and start drinking as fast as they can. Um, but they only have until the other team recovers the ball after it bounces off the can. Ooh, it's gonna go flying. Sometimes really goes flying. Sometimes doesn't go flying that much. Most of the time. So the other team is scrambling for the ball. They pick up the ball. You hit the table with it and you say stop. So after they say stop and the ball is in their possession, clearly my teammate has to stop drinking. Most of the time you like barely get your can flipped over and then you like you barely get it open and then you take like one sip. It's like very like, it doesn't take a long time for people to get the ball back onto the table. Um, so it's, it's pretty good for people who aren't that good at chugging. Like it, you're not, most of the time there's not going to be like a lot of like long periods of drinking. It's like very quick, quick, quick. Um, so after it's my turn, then it's the other team's turn. They're going to try to hit my cans. After they, after one of them goes, it's my partner's turn and they try to hit my opponent's cans. And if they hit, then I get to drink while they're recovering the ball. Um, and this goes back and forth until one of your cans is empty. So say I keep hitting the beer can. If you miss, it's over. Like your, your partner can't drink, obviously. You have to hit the beer can first. Uh, so there's a lot of missing. And um, you want to be sure that your elbow doesn't go over the table. You don't want to get, you don't be leaning too far. Um, say I keep hitting my opponent's cans. That means my partner is getting a lot of opportunities to drink. So my partner's can is now empty. They did it. Huzzah. So after their can is empty, we're going to remove it from the table. They can no longer use that can as a target. And now... I'm done throwing because now that my partner finished their beer can, all they have to do is hit the can enough times that I can finish my can too. If my can is done, we win. Um, so it's a race between the teams to see who can finish both of their beers first, but you can only drink after your partner is hit has hit the can. I hope that makes sense. It is such a fun game. Um, it is very chaotic to play indoors on hardwood because the ball goes flying and then the hardwood is like, you know, the ball is rolling. If there's stairs, oh my god, it's over. Like, it's tough. So we have found that playing it outside in the grass has been by far the most pleasant beer ball experience. So this is one that you might need to wait for good weather for. We have played it in the pouring rain. That was quite fun. But if it was really cold, I feel like that would not be fun. But yeah, play it in the grass would be my suggestion. The next game is a very fun game called Chesties. It's called Chesties. So you're going to need the same table, a card table type, fold out, whatever. So once again, you're going to need one partner, but this time you stand diagonal from your partner. So I'm on this side, my partner's over there on the other side of the table. And in front of you, you need four cups with however much beer you want to put in them. Um, and they're going to be shaped in a diamond. So you're going to have cup, 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 cup in a diamond, kind of to, like diagonal facing your partner. And they're going to have the same thing. So the other team does the same thing, your opponent's next to you, and diagonal. Each per each team gets one pong ball, so you're going to need two pong balls to play this. And what you want to do is, uh, the game is nice and fast-paced, because both teams are going to be playing actively at the same time. There's no turns, there's no waiting, you just go, 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 go. So once the game starts, I need to bounce my ball I need to bounce the ball onto the table. The ball needs to come up, 
my partner needs to hit that ball with their chest, no hands, hit that ball with their chest into one of the cups. That is the game. So I have bounced the ball, my partner gets the ball, and it falls into a cup. Fantastic. Partner takes the ball out, drinks that beer, and now we're down to three cups. Fantastic. They're going to do the same thing, bounce it back to me. I try to get it in the cup. Oh, I miss. It's okay. I get the ball, bounce it back to them. They get it in the cup. Great. So, um, you're trying to get the ball to fall into each of the four cups. You drink the beer when it falls in, and then you get to remove that cup. Once you have gotten all four, and your opponent has, or your partner has gotten all four, there is one big, just water cup in the in the middle of the table and you need to double bounce the ball in to win which can take a really long time so um it helps like if the other team is behind like they still have a chance technically because a double bounce is hard so once you finish your cups you can start going for the victory cup in the middle there and you just start double bouncing double bounce and you try to get it in and then your partner can try or if like like, if I'm really good at double bouncing and my partner isn't, they can just keep uh, rebounding the ball for, for me and, like, throwing it back to me so I can try again, try again, try again. And once I double bounce it into the middle, if I did that first, we win. And that's chesties. Chesties. <laughs> so fun. I love chesties. The next game is baseball. Baseball is a very fun drinking game. Um, you can play as many innings as you'd like to make it longer or shorter, and you will need a pretty decently sized team. I would say at least three people on each team to play. At least. And then you might have like ghost runners and stuff. The more people, the better. So once again, you split into two teams. So the table is going to be laid out like this. This one probably deserves a little drawing. So here's the table, and on each side, there's four cups. One, two, three, four. Okay, so team A is over here, team B is over here, and then there's cups right here. And that's how you'll set it up. So there are a couple different ways to play this. Uh, in terms of the drunken level, if this is the only game you're playing that night and you're really committing to this, you can play the absolute savage way, which would be, so the cup closest is a single, then a double, then a triple, and then a home run at the very back. So team A would be shooting over here, and team B would be shooting over here, and... If you're playing the savage drinking way, the home run cup would be filled to the brim with beer. And I actually don't play these games with solo cups. I play them with the, they literally have a name, it's like the RK something something. Um, they're a little bit smaller, they're clear plastic cups, but they're a little smaller, so I do feel like the volume may be the same. I can't remember. Anyway, the home run cup would be filled to the brim with beer, and you want to fill it to the brim so that it's hard for the other team to sink a ball into it. You want it to bounce off that liquid, so you want to fill it as, as high to the brim as possible. Then the third, uh, like the triple, would be filled pretty high, the double would be filled halfway, and the single would be filled like a quarter way. So like 25, 50, 75, 100%, basically. Um, if you want to play a lot of this game, you don't want to drink too much, maybe you're playing other games during the day, all of the beers can be at about 25 to 30 percent full. So, when the other team is up to bat, so there is up to bat and there is defense, uh, team B is up to bat and their first player goes. Now there is, uh, there are strikes in this game. So, unfortunately, I can never remember the very detail details of these strikes, but if the, 
ball hits the table. Misses the cup, but hits the table and then flies off. That's a strike. If the ball completely misses the table, it doesn't hit the table, doesn't hit the cups, that is an out. You're done. You're done so. No strikes. If you miss the whole freaking table, you're out. The end. If you hit a cup and it bounces off, that's also a strike. Uh, so say the first runner, batter, the first batter, they bounce it off the first cup, but it doesn't go in and it flies off. Strike one. However, team A is going to have a defender on this side. And the rules for the defender is you can only catch with one hand and you can't catch it against your body. So if you like were to catch it like this, that doesn't count. You have to catch it out, outwards, outwards. You can't like pin it against your body. So, okay, strike one. Batter goes again. They throw the ball. It hits a cup. It flies off. And the defender snags it out of the air. That person is out. They're out. And then obviously three strikes and you're out. If someone catches the ball, you're out. And you only have one defender. Uh, and you swap it every time. Like, someone can't play defender the entire game. You only get one inning. Um, so say the next batter is up. They go ahead and they sink a triple. Heck yeah. So now that person is on base. And they go stand on base. And then team A has to send a defender also on base. So the reason that you need people on base, this is going to be filled with a little bit of beer each, um, is that team B can actually steal. So you can steal bases. Um, this batter just got a triple, so they're on third base. They can steal home pretty easily. And how you steal is you play flip cup. Um, so while team B is sending their next batter up, you know, he's they're about to throw the ball this player grabs her cup and starts and starts drinking and so once they grab their cup that is the only time the defender can touch their cup if you touch your cup you are stealing you can't put that back if you touch your cup you gotta go that's the rules so these people are now engaged in a rapid round of flip cup they drink their beer and you put your empty cup onto the side of the table and you need to flip, flip it over and have it land on its side or on the top, you know, flat. Um, the first person who, do, who does that wins. So if the person who's stealing the base is the first person to successfully flip their cup over, yes, they stole that base, it was successful. And now instead of being on third, they are home and team B gets a point. If the defender flips their cup first, um, that means that the runner on third was caught and they are out. And that is now an out for team B. And now they have two outs. So that is a baseball. Um, say that the runner decided to not steal. They're on third, no drama. Another batter comes up and they make a single, um, that would get the player from third home. So you don't have to like, like it's not like in other baseball type games where like, like if you have a player on third and someone gets a single, it does mean that they get to go home. Uh, so that's good. Easier to keep track of, honestly. And then team B would get a point and then they also have someone on first base because they got a single. So that's that. It's very fun. Very fun game. Um, hopefully I explained that well. But that's baseball. Speaking of flip cup, um, I feel like that's a pretty common game that everyone knows, or maybe has probably heard of, uh, just in terms of drinking games in general. I feel like beer pong and flip cup are probably the most common. Um, that's when you drink your beer, 
you put the cup down and you flip it over. And the faster, you, like if you do it faster than everyone else, you win. Now there's a version that is quite fun for teams. It's called Elimination Flip Cup. And usually you play in like teams of four. Each team member gets their own cup, all is fine and dandy, and you can play with multiple teams. So you can be like four teams of four. Everyone gets their own cup and you have an order. So you can only go one at a time. So if I went first, then my teammate, my second teammate can only go after I have successfully flipped my cup. And you want to try to get all the way down to the end. You can go back and forth if you want. Like you can, each person has two cups and you have to get my first one and then the second player will go and the third player will go and the fourth person goes twice in a row and then the third player goes again, second player goes again. And then I anchor and finish with my second cup. You can do that. You can just do it one way. Um, let's say we're doing just one way. I start, my anchor finishes. Say my team, everyone starts at the same time, okay? And you want to go down, up, down, and then you drink. That's how everyone starts at the same time. Is everyone ready? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Down, up, down, and then you're good to, good to start. So I start. I'm fumbling. I'm terrible. I'm loose, and it's a bad time. I mess it up for my team. We come in last of all the teams. So now my team has to eliminate someone. This is elimination flip cup. Because I did really terrible, it's only right that I get kicked out. So I am out of my team. I am no longer playing this game. And my poor team has to now shoulder my incompetence. And one of them will now have to drink for me. So there's still, there always has to be four cups for your team, but now there's only three players to manage that. <laughs> so this game gets quite fun. Um, the people who stay in end up drinking quite a bit of beer, especially if like all three of their teammates get eliminated. They have to drink and flip all four cups, but maybe this person's amazing and they're like winning and winning and winning. Um, and then, yeah, eventually the winner would be, you know, it could be my poor teammate, all alone on his own versus a full team of four. Everyone else got eliminated if it's just one person versus four people. The one person team can still win if he beats this team in the round. I, that makes sense. It definitely makes sense. But that is a, has a pretty funny one. It, the stakes are quite high and uh, they're like some good like underdog teams that end up winning and it's hilarious. Okay, so the game is called Piccolo. It is literally a drinking game app. I found this app in college and once again, it's been on my phone since college and I still whip it out every once in a while and it is always a hit. It is so good if you're trying to like, one, if you're like trying to pre-game something and you only have a certain amount of time, two, uh, if you're like winding down the night, three, if you're like out at a, at a pretty quiet bar and you're like not sure what to do, okay? So what you do for Piccolo is you put in people's names. So I'll put in GB, Vest, Ben, Dennis. You can put in a ton of people. And it says, let's get drunk. And then there's different modes. So the different modes are getting started, getting crazy, bar, which is you're supposed to play when you're out at the bar, but I never play that mode because they have like really embarrassing dares and I hate talking to strangers. <laughs> Caliente. Okay. Um, and war. So the war one is really fun because it splits you into two teams and it's really good for people who know each other. I wouldn't play this one as like an icebreaker for people that don't know each other that well because it'd be pretty hard. But if you're with a group of friends that really know each other a lot, um, war is hysterical. Uh, getting started, there's going to be things like 
and what happens is a rule pops up on the phone you read it you click it you pass it on um, so if you can vest if you can find two arguments in favor of Ben being allowed into heaven hand out two sips otherwise you have to drink them that one's kind of stupid like silly GB if you've ever streaked in public give out two sips if not drink two times so it's like a little bit like truth or dare it's a little like there's like the challenges there's little like uh, punishments random things that happen yeah, so this is a virus. Everyone put down your glass and pick up the glass to the right of you. So it's just like silly little rules. I will say you have to commit to the game before you start. Because sometimes, well, that, that one's dumb, that one's dumb. And then you end up not really doing any of the rules that you don't want to do. It's much funnier when people commit to like, okay, whatever shows up on the screen, like we're doing to an extent if you're obviously not comfortable with something like if we're, we're kind of playing this like a little bit during like covid -y type air like era and it'd be like switch your glass and we're like yeah no not today I'm too germy um so the getting crazy one i think i like the best it's like a good balance the caliente one is it is actually very caliente like um so yeah, don't play that with family members. Definitely don't play that with family members. Um, and you know, like, you could just peek around and see if you're comfortable with it, but uh, it's, it's very fun, and all the rules are here, so you don't have to think, and I think that's the best part of it. You just pass it around, and it's a good time. Like, I would pull this out, like, at a wedding when I'm sitting at a table with people I don't know that well, and like as a table like we all played piccolo and it was hilarious and like funny i don't know good time i like piccolo sponsor me do you still like this app is old this app is old <laughs> the next game is called relay um so this is a combination of a couple of beer games but it's really straightforward and really fun. I feel like relays are just fun in general. Um, whenever there's a game relay style, I tend to really enjoy it. It's just, it's fast, it's competitive. So the way you set up relay is you can have as many teams as you want participate. If it's just two teams, you can do it at the exact same time, uh, just on one side and the other side of the table, do it at the same time, and that's how you do it. If there's more than two teams and you just have one table, um, you just time it and whoever has the fastest time wins. Um, so say you're just setting up uh, one because you're going to time this one. So what you want to do is the first thing is it's going to be a, I don't know how to draw this from above, a cup on top of another cup. So it's like like, um, I'll draw from the side. So you want to put one cup facing downward on the table like that, like face it downward. And then you want to put another cup balancing on top of it. So it's two layers of cup and you can put things into this. So that would be right here. That's the first part. The second part is flip cup. And then the third part, you have one, two, three, four. So you have four team members. And then there's four cups, uh, like maybe like halfway at, at most, filled with beer at the end here. So the first person goes one ball. You need to bounce the, the ball onto the table and get it into this high, high cup here, which is kind of hard, obviously. So you bounce it, get it into the high cup. Once you get it in, you drink that beer, put it down. You scoot your little booty over here and do flip cup, flip your cup, great, you flipped your cup. Now you're going to run back to this side of the table and you'll have a teammate over here helping you, um, like relaying the ball to you. And you need to make a, a, beer, a beer pong cup here. So your worst person will go first. Your worst person at beer pong goes first because you have four cups to hit and that's much easier. So, the first person hits their cup, then they have to 
run over to the side of the table, drink this cup as fast as they can, and then that cup's gone from the table. And then the second person can go. Second person, same thing, they make a cup. Third person, and then the last person only gets one little cup to make, which is quite hard. Um, but they do the same thing. They bounce, they flip, and then they beer pong. And that's Relay. Very straightforward. Kind of. <laughs> the next game that is hard to explain, and honestly, I'll just tell you to look it up. It's called Slap Cup. If you haven't played, you can also play Stack Cup if you're inside and you don't want a mess all over your floor of beer. You can play Stack Cup. It's the same thing, but instead of slapping the cup, you stack it. Um, look up Slap Cup. Very, 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 very fun game uh, for people who, like, don't love super intense drinking games. It's, like, a low pressure, very low pressure game, um, and really good for a big group of people. You do have to, like, share cups, though, so make sure these people are not sick. Germy, you know? So that's the only kind of gross thing about Slap Cup. Is that? It's pretty, pretty germy if you play more than once. If you only play once, you're good to go. But that's quite a waste of cups to only play once. Picky poison, you know. Picky poison. I'm just saying. But look up Slap Cup. I'm sorry, I can't. I don't think I'll explain it well enough. And but we gotta move on. We gotta go. Ooh, before I move on, um not a drinking game, but I will say Spike Ball is another, like, real game that you have to purchase, but is so worth the money and so much fun if you have a backyard, um, or you are close to, like, a beach, like a beach or a park of any sort. I'm sure you've seen people play it. It's like a, a tiny, small, like, it almost looks like a trampoline on the ground. It's like netting. And then there's, like, a mini yellow, like, volleyball, technically, it's a volleyball, but it's mini and squishy. It's, like, full of air. And it's a four-player game where you have to, like, spike and bounce the ball. I don't know. Just look up. Spike ball is another recommendation that I've had a lot, a lot of fun with. It's a really good Christmas gift. All right, the last couple of drinking games... Um, okay, this one's not necessarily a drinking game. Game. We use the, the term game loosely here. It is, um, it is a chug. It's a chug race of light beer. And usually the, like, to do a chugging race is very straightforward, a little boring, um, unless everyone is either really good or really bad at chugging. Usually, like, there's the person who can throw it back in less than three seconds, and it's disturbing. And then there's me, who's dying and cannot chug. I can't chug. It's okay, but I can't chug, okay? Unless you can modify the chug to be much more fun for a wide range of people. It makes it a lot more competitive and a lot funnier. So the competitive one would be the straw chug, um, where you put, everyone puts a beer in a glass, you get a straw, and that's it. You have to chug the beer through the straw. It slows it down enough for the people who are so good at chugging that it makes it, like, uh, people, oh, people were doing it in, like, seven seconds. I am very proud of myself and got 12 seconds, which is a huge improvement. I, yeah. But you just, you chug through a straw and it just makes it a little bit more even playing field for people. Um... Then the other straw chug, which is hilarious and really funny, 
um, definitely try it again. If like you're in teams, you know, you have to do it like one at a time and your, your teammate can't go until the other teammates done. And it's a race, of course, but you do it in a, in an ice cube tray. So you take an, a plastic ice cube tray, silicone be kind of gross. Um, you take a plastic ice cube tray and then you fill the little ice cube things. You need a pretty big one. You fill the little one with the beer and you get a straw and you have to <laughs> suck it out of all the little ice compartments. And it is just, it's hysterical to watch. It's hard to do. Um, and it is, it is a good time. It is a good time. Um, you do drink a full beer during it. I guess you could like, you don't have to fill it with a full beer if you don't want, but you know, ice cube, beer chug, do it. It is so funny. Next up is not a competitive game, um, but more of a camaraderie game. It, a lot of you I'm sure have heard of this before. It's called Cheers Governor or Cheers to the Governor or 21 Cup, maybe people call it still. Oh, there are so many other games I forgot. I've read about King's Cup. Oh, Ride the Bus. Horse Race. Oh my god, Horse Race is so fun. I'm gonna have to do a part two. I'm gonna have to do a part two, but I'm almost filming for an hour and a half. I got let me know if you want a part two. This game is called Cheers Governor. Once again, you're wanting to get the group to count to 21, but it is in a more organized fashion this time, and it is a drinking game. Doesn't have to be, I guess, but it's typically played as a drinking game. And what you want to do is go around in a circle, and I would say one, the person next to me says two, the person next to them says three, the person next to them says four. Ba, 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 ba. Until you hit 21 and everyone says, cheers, governor. And you clink your glasses and you drink, hooray. So the first rule is that the numbers seven and 14 are flipped. That's always the first rule. That's how you start the game. So I say one, the person next to me says two, three, four, five, six. It's back to me. I don't say seven, I say 14, because that's the rule. Seven and 14 are flipped. After I say 14, it really was seven. So the person next to me says eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. That person over there says seven, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Cheers, governor. Boom. We did it. So the person who hits 21, cheers, governor, now has to think of a new rule that will take the place of a number. So I'm like, okay, instead of saying number three, I want you to make an animal noise. That's a super common one. Or like say three in an accent or in a different language. That one's always very funny. Um, or instead of three, like spit in a circle. Well, that would suck. Uh, so you have to try to think of funny rules that you could do for each one. Uh, you could even do like on three, like you play a round of never have I ever, like you, you could do anything, anything at all. You want to keep it interesting, of course. So I say, okay, on number three, you have to make an animal noise. Okay, great. We're going to start the next round. One, two. Instead of saying three, they have to remember. Uh, moo. Great. Four, five, six, 14, eight, nine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The rule is that seven and 14 are flipped. You got it wrong everyone boos. <laughs> the person who got it wrong has to drink for their terribleness. And then we have to start over from one over there because they messed up. Eventually, every single number will have a rule. It is so hard to remember them all. Everyone's getting more and more tipsy, which makes it harder. 
but uh, this game is really long. Uh, it's a very long game. It's a very fun game if you if everyone is into it and like committing to play it. Um, and I've had really really fun nights playing Cheers Governor. So that's a great one to break out with a nice big group of people. All right, the very last game I'm going to talk about today is super simple and short. It doesn't have a name as far as I know. I'm calling it Surprise Vodka. Once again, you're going to be in teams probably for this. You don't have to be in teams. You should be in teams. I don't know. Be in, be in teams. So someone from each team, one person from each team, goes to like the back room or the kitchen or you know, somewhere where the teams can't see. And they're going to prepare... Let's say there's four people on each team. I'm going to prepare four shot glasses. Three of those shot glasses have water, and one of them has vodka. Then, <laughs> we go out, and each team member, it's going to be like on a little platter, is going to pick which shot glass they want, and the last one goes to me. And that way, because I know which one has vodka in it, the, uh, the rest of the team does not, um, that way, like, I could end up with the vodka, like, I'd, I can't just, like, hand it off. Um, great, so now everyone has a shot. So what you do is you go down the line, and everyone takes their shot one at a time, while the other team scrutinizes you. So, they go one at a time, and my team, my team members, don't know if they have vodka or water. They have no idea. So, it is very, like, nobody wants the vodka. It's disgusting. Um, and so, it's going to be a surprise to them. If I happen to get the vodka, like, I get a little bit of a, of a advantage because I'm, like, prepared for it. But that, you can, like, switch who does the shots. The other team has to guess, okay, you watched everyone take their shot, who had the vodka? <laughs> so the people with water can like overplay it, like if I had, I got, I got a water shot, I, you know, you take it, you know, you, you play it up, you ham it up, or you don't ham it up at all, you have super poker face the whole time, either one works. Uh, in this game you can't play too much, especially if it's like when I played and then I got vodka twice in a row. I don't want any more after that. I'm done playing. <laughs> but it is pretty funny, uh, especially the first time you play. It's like a very tame, like it's a very tame like roulette type experience where you're like, you're scared if you're gonna get it or not. And it's just funny. Um, so yeah, I'll call that one Surprise Vodka, I guess. But that is my last game. I hope that this was mildly entertaining. If you have any other games that you like to play, please, I am always looking for more games. Give them to me. Yeah, give them to me. I will consume them. Um, I can't wait to play a bunch of these with, <laughs> with my cousins soon. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. This is a super long video. The, these were like my most popular slash favorite games, but I do have more. Um, I also have a lot of like, I didn't even dip the toe in like the improv game realm. Like that can be really fun with like the right group of people who are into it. Um, so if you want more of these where I just explain games, again, it's really long. I ramble. It's not like a fast and easy tutorial, but I can always do a part two. Just let me know. Hit me up. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, sleep well, have fun, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope everybody has a very safe and happy holiday if you're in the U.S. Uh, or otherwise, if there's a holiday in your country, or just safe and happy in general because that's always the goal.